Hi everyone, welcome to Storytime Anytime, Miss Molly here. Can you guess what we're gonna be talking about today as our Storytime theme? I'll give you some hints. It's green, there's good luck, maybe a four leaf clover, maybe a leprechaun sighting or two, a parade. That's right, it's St. Patrick's Day. St. Patrick's Day happens every March 17th. And there's usually a lot of parades, as I said, good luck charms, lots of green, green clothes, green food, green everything. And it might have started off as a religious holiday, but it's kind of morphed into a fun celebration of Irish culture, which is really, really neat. What do you think? So we talked a little bit about leprechauns, but do you know what a leprechaun is? According to Irish folklore, they are small fairies, and if a human were to catch one, the leprechaun must give that human three wishes, one, two, three, in order to get their freedom. And I say he for leprechauns because there aren't any lady leprechauns, only boys. Pretty silly, huh? All right, we're going to start with our hello song. We're going to sing this two times. If you'd like to sing with me but you don't know the words, don't worry. I put them down below in the comments. All right, I hope you'll sing with me. Here we go. You can tap your hands on your lap or clap them in front of you. It's up to you. All right, hello song. We're gonna do this two times. Hello, hello, hello. It's time to say hello. Hello today to all my friends. Hello, hello, hello. Hi everyone. One more time, ready? Extra loud. Hello, hello, hello. It's time to say hello. Hello today to all my friends. Hello, hello, hello. Hi, everybody. All right, now we've got to get our wiggles out. Are you ready so we can be good listeners? We're going to reach up really, really high. Arms all the way up to the sky. Good job. We're going to reach all the way down. Can you touch your toes? Good job. Can we reach all the way out to either side? And now bring those arms in really, really narrow. Good job. We're gonna reach our arms all the way up, nice and straight like a pencil. And we're gonna tip over to the left and over to the right. Good job. Arms back out a T. And we're gonna go in circles really fast, really fast, really fast, really fast. And backwards, nice and slow. Arms down. Can we wave to one another? Hello, my friend. It's so nice to see you. Are you happy to be here? I know I am. I see a smile. Awesome. We're ready to go. We have one more song before our first book, right, my friends? That's right, it's our Have a Seat song. You can tap your hands on your lap again or clap them in front of you, it's up to you. Here we go. Everybody, everybody, come on over. Everybody, come and have a seat on the floor. Everybody, everybody, come on over. Everybody, come and have a seat on the floor. Not on the ceiling, not on the door. Everybody come and have a seat on the floor. Not on the ceiling, not on the door. Everybody come and have a seat on the floor. Good job, my friends. All right, are you ready for our first book? We talked a little bit about leprechauns already, which is pretty good because our first book is about leprechauns. It's The Leprechaun Under the Bed. And this book is by Teresa Bateman, and it's illustrated by Paul Messel. And it's a magic book, which disappears a little bit. Huh. The Leprechaun Under the Bed by Teresa Bateman, illustrated by Paul Messel. Brian O'Shea enjoyed his privacy. A leprechaun can be alone without being lonely, he liked to say. Indeed, he would know, for he made a snug home beneath the ground in an out-of-the-way spot. Looks pretty cozy. But time went on, and big, tall humans moved nearer and nearer, until one day, a man named Sean McDonald started building a stone cottage right overhead. Brian tried leprechaun magic to stop Sean. He made Sean see headless ghosts and even a banshee rising from the foundations of his new stone cottage. Ooh, pretty spooky. But his plan backfired. It's just like my sainted mother always told me, Sean declared delighted. The land of Ireland is full of magic and surprises. 
All too soon, the fine cottage stood over Brian's home, so he built a door underneath Sean's bed. Mm, there's a leprechaun under the bed. On moonlit nights, Brian would cobble outside. Cobbling means he's making shoes. When it rained, he worked under Sean's bed, deliberately disturbing the man's sleep. Yet, he didn't wish to be discovered. So, if Sean moved, Brian would whisper, Now don't you be fretting your wee little head. It's only the cat under the bed. Is that a cat? No, that's Brian. After a week of restless nights, Sean decided they had to know why he wasn't sleeping well. He went to bed as usual, but though his eyes were closed, his ears were open. At midnight, the tapping began, and Sean sat bolt upright. Now don't you be fretting your wee little head, it's only the cat underneath the bed, he heard from below. Ah, of course, the cat. Sean yawned, settling back under the covers. Then his eyes flew open. I don't own a cat, he said, and even if I did, who ever heard of a talking cat? So, what was under the bed? The answer popped into his head, and Sean smiled. His mother had always said that a leprechaun in the house was a fine piece of luck. Luck he couldn't afford to lose. The next morning, Sean made stir about for breakfast, placed a bowl of it under the bed for the cat. At lunch, the bowl was empty, so he put in some stew. From that day on, every time he filled his own plate, he added a bit to the bowl under the bed. What do you think? Does Brian like that? Looks like it, huh? Sean was a hard-working man, but his small farm produced barely enough. Times grew hard, and times grew harder, until there came a day when Sean went to bed with both his stomach and the bowl empty. The next morning, a gold coin gleamed in the middle of the kitchen table. What a blessing it is to have a cat in the house, he remarked aloud before hurrying out to buy some good food. They lived well for weeks on that coin, but soon the cupboard was bare again, and another gold coin appeared. Consider this alone, Sean said, until the times get better. Thank you, cat. But when Sean went to buy his oatmeal and potatoes, there was more than one eyebrow raised in the village. A poor man might have saved one gold coin for hard times, but two, two was unheard of. Gossip ran like water through fingers, and as it spread, it grew. Sean McDonald must have a whole chest of gold coins hidden in his cottage. Hmm, what many tongues say, be it true or not, many ears hear. Two robbers caught wind of that tale and decided no one deserved Sean's gossiped gold more than they did. One crisp, dry morning, they hid outside, waiting for Sean to leave. Then they slipped into his cottage, tossed the cupboards and pried stones out of his fireplace. What are they looking for? Gold. Hmm. Such a clatter made Brian poke his head up from under the bed. He was shocked at what he saw. But what happened next was even worse. The cottage door swung open and Sean returned for a forgotten tool. Oh no. In no more time than it takes to tell, the robbers tied the poor man to a chair. Tell us where you've hidden the gold, they bellowed. Fearing for Sean's safety, Brian banged his hammer on the floor to catch the robbers' attention. Hey, now, what's that? One of the men asked. Fearing for Brian's safety, Sean spoke quickly. Now don't you be fretting your wee little head. It's only the cat underneath the bed. <gasps> Uh-oh. Cat? The man replied, well, the bed's the only place we haven't looked. As Sean worried, Brian grinned. Both robbers stuck their hands under the bed, and there they saw exactly what Brian had told them. What was it? A cat. But this was a wild cat, eyes like lightning and claws like knives. The cat smiled at the robbers, then licked its lips as if it found the sight of them 
tasty with a shriek the men tumbled backwards and then fled as if the devil himself were at their heels Brian laughed and tears ran down his cheeks Sean chuckled as well as he wiggled out from the rope then he stretched and bowed in the direction of his pillow "'Tis a grand thing indeed having a cat beneath the bed,' he declared. "'Aye,' replied a voice from below. "'And it's a pleasure having a friend above it.'" And they lived well and happily for the rest of their days. The end. What do you guys think? Is that pretty silly? Are we happy that Brian and Sean were okay, even though they were robbers? Yeah. <laughs> All right, my friends, so we've got a couple songs to go with our silly books today. Our next one is going to be called Leprechaun Dancing, and it's to the tune of Skip to My Loop. So we're going to do some dancing. Are you ready? Okay, here we go. Leprechaun, leprechaun, dance to the right. Leprechaun, leprechaun, dance to the right. Leprechaun, leprechaun, dance to the right. Dance to the right, my green friend. Now we got to go to the left. Ready? Leprechaun, leprechaun, dance to the left. Leprechaun, leprechaun, dance to the left. Leprechaun, leprechaun, dance to the left. Dance to the left, my green friend. Good job. Now we're going to dance all around crazy. Ready? Leprechaun, leprechaun, dance all around. Leprechaun, leprechaun, dance all around. Leprechaun, leprechaun, dance all around. Dance all around, my green friend. Good job. All right. Our next one is all about the color green. We've got so many green things. Our leprechauns were green. Shamrocks are green. The grass is green. The, the little circles behind me are green. All right, so this is to the tune of bingo, and we're going to spell the word green. G-R-E-E-N. So the first time we sing the song, we sing it all the way through with all the letters. But then as we keep singing it, we take one letter away. It's pretty neat. We're going to start with it whole. Here we go. There is a color that I say was represents St. Patrick's Day. G-R-E-E-N, 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 and green is that color. Good job. Now when we sing it, we're going to take out the N at the end of green. And we're going to replace it with a clap. All right, here we go. There is a color that I say which represents St. Patrick's Day. G R E E. G R E E, G R E E, and green is that color. Good job. Now we're going to take out an E and an N, so we're going to have two claps. There is a color that I say which represents St. Patrick's Day. G R, G R E, G R E, and green is that color. Messed up a little bit there, that's okay. Now we're going to do three claps, two E's and an N. There is a color that I say which represents St. Patrick's Day. G R, G R, G R, and green is that color. Now four, here we go. There is a color that I say which represents St. Patrick's Day. G, 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 and green is that color. One more time through. We're not saying any of the letters, we just have five claps. Are you ready? Here we go. There is a color that I say which represents St. Patrick's Day. And green is that color. Good job, my friends. That's a tricky one, huh? All right, we've got one more song before our next book and it's all about luck if you're lucky and you know it. So we're gonna start by clapping our hands because it's to the tune of if you're happy and you know it. Okay, here we go. If you're lucky and you know it, clap your hands. If you're lucky and you know it, clap your hands. If you're lucky and you know it and you really wanna show it. If you're lucky and you know it, clap your hands. If you're lucky and you know it, tap your lap. If you're lucky and you know it, tap your lap. If you're lucky and you know it and you really wanna show it. If you're lucky and you know it, tap your lap. If you're lucky and you know it, stomp your feet. If you're lucky and you know it, stomp your feet. If you're lucky and you know it and you really want to show it. If you're lucky and you know it, stomp your feet. Good job, my friends. Awesome. Are you ready for our next book? This one is called The Good Luck Bear. 
And this one is by Greg Foley. The Good Luck Bear. By Greg Foley. And it's for those who find luck in the unexpected. One day, while lying in the grass, a little bear found a clover with three tiny leaves. Do we see? One, two, three. He showed it to his friend Mouse. Mouse said, if you find one with four leaves, it means that you're lucky. Bear started looking for a four-leaf clover. Think he's going to find it? Monkey saw him looking and said, there's no such thing as a four-leaf clover. That's not true, is it? Turtle saw him looking and said, that's going to take forever. Elephant saw him and said, I remember seeing one, but I forgot where. So Bear kept looking. Groundhog asked, if you don't find one, does that mean that you're not lucky? Squirrel came and said, I prefer them with three leaves. And he took as many as he could carry. Then Bunny said, here's one, and he ate it. Good luck, Bear, he said. Oh, Bunny. The little bear felt very unlucky. Until he saw Mouse. Mouse said, I think I found something for you. What could it be? Bear went over to look. Does it have four leaves? He asked. Mouse said, no. It has five. Oh my goodness. One, two, three, four, five leaves. That's the luckiest ever. Good job, my friends. What do you think about our lucky little bear? Pretty sweet, huh? All right. We've got time for one more song, and that's our goodbye song. That's right. All right, my friends, you're going to sing it with me, all right? It's just like our little song, but we say goodbye, so we're going to do it two times. You can clap your hands or tap your lap. It's up to you. Here we go. Goodbye, goodbye, goodbye. It's time to say goodbye. Goodbye today to all my friends. Goodbye, goodbye, goodbye. One more time. Are you ready? Goodbye, goodbye, goodbye. It's time to say goodbye. Goodbye today to all my friends. Goodbye, goodbye, goodbye. Thank you for joining me for a very special and lucky St. Patrick's Day Storytime Anytime, and I hope that I'll see you guys again soon. Sound good? All right, my friends. Bye. Thank you.